This is a research report from TUM, Technische Universität München. Peter isn't sick. He's giving blood for science. And this is no ordinary doctor's office. This facility belongs to a network of labs pioneering an interdisciplinary research field known as metabolomics. Here, blood plasma and urine samples can yield metabolic profiles based on changing concentrations of small molecules, hundreds of them, in response to controlled dietary intervention. Of course, metabolomics is uh, a coinage of all this omics technologies. So it started with the talking about genomics. Then we had proteomics, which uh, covers the protein complement of the genome. And uh, of course, the metabolites are flowing between the proteins. So it was obvious yeah, to call this high throughput metabolite profiling metabolomics. Tom professor Hanna Laura Daniel has built up an arsenal of analytic capabilities. Changes in gene expression, protein levels, and metabolites can all be measured in samples from volunteers like Peter. Beyond that, Daniel has established a framework for conducting full clinical studies together with partners both within and outside the Technical University of Munich. So we started many years ago to develop new technologies and new analytical measurements uh, to monitor um, metabolites in foods, in plant materials, in botanicals, uh, but also in meat products, for example. And at the end, um, we figured out, and this is not surprising, that the same metabolites are present in human biofluids. Um, the cellular and biological mechanisms are the same as in the, or similar to that of a plant. And so we have a similar set of compounds of organic acids, amino acids, nucleotides, and other uh, compounds, so it was just easy and a logical consequence to expand our expertise into this uh, metabolomics field. That insight defines the common ground between Professor Thomas Hoffman's group and Daniel's. What drives both is a conviction that metabolomics could have enormous influence in areas from fundamental biology to personalized medicine. The big surprise after the uh, sequencing of the human genome was the learning that by 99% we are genetically identical. Yet, if you look at people, you realize they are different. Metabolism is as variable, despite the fact of almost identical genetics. Now, if we take identical people in terms of age and gender, and body mass index and challenge them with exactly the same diet. The concentration profiles means the amount of a given metabolite in plasma after food intake is highly variable. And you, of course, ask why? And of course, we would like to understand what are the causes of these differences? And what can we learn if we follow people over longer periods of time? So do we see early changes in metabolic responses, whether to food intake or a fasting period or an exercise period that allows us to identify parameters or biomarkers that would help us to predict that a third person over time will run into a condition of a metabolic disease, such as a diabetes type 2, for example. Experts in statistics and bioinformatics can help to find the answers by revealing telltale correlations and larger patterns in oceans of multidimensional data. The vital first steps are careful design of human studies and screening of volunteers. We are trying to measure the height and the weight to calculate the BMI which is usually used in these kinds of studies to select for volunteers that are all in the same BMI range, not to have too large variations between the subjects. Also, for some studies, it is important to measure the uh, body composition, like how much fat, how much muscle mass do these volunteers have. Uh, we have two options to do that. One would be the so-called BIA, the bioimpedance analysis, which is similar to your, you know, 
body fat scales at home. And the other would be the DEXA, which is a little bit more tricky to do, um, but it's much more exact as a method. On top, we asked the volunteers to uh, go into a little device that allows us to measure the state of nutrient oxidation and its basic metabolic rate. So the basic, basic metabolic rate is the uh, amount of energy you need to spend or to burn in the end if you're fairly relaxed laying on a couch. With samples from selected volunteers, measurement and analysis can begin. Hoffman's team handles a large share of that work. In many cases we just start with quantitation of known metabolites. So we screen in our targeted approach known metabolites in biofluids, for example. And uh, for this we first have to work up the plasma samples, for example. So we have developed methodologies to um, remove proteins, for example, from, from, the, this, from the plasma to uh, concentrate the plasma and then to directly, without any diverterization, to directly measure the metabolites in this sample. And we need about uh, 10 to 50 microliter, a very small amount of the plasma, to do this type of analysis. And then we have different analytical tools. One is uh, mass spectrometry. We have tandem mass spectrometry as, as the key element where we um, uh, use um, specific mass transitions of metabolites to identify them and by using stable isotope label standards to also quantify them in a very accurate way. And secondly, they have uh, NMR spectroscopy as another tool where we do not separate the metabolites first. We measure them directly in a glass vial uh, with a urine sample, for example, it's uh, rather easy to do. With the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, we are able to measure, for example, protons of molecules. Each molecule shows a different signal pattern. And so we can um, say if it's this compound or another compound. The ability to distinguish, say, between a coffee lover and someone who never touches the stuff suggests the kind of specificity that can be achieved in developing and comparing metabolic profiles. These are two NMR spectros of urine. The upper one is from a non-coffee drinker and the lower one is from a coffee drinker. And finally, if we identify new metabolites, we do not know the structure yet, we have technologies to enrich these compounds, to isolate and purify them, and then to determine the chemical structure of this unknown metabolite, which is a, um, yeah, a, a decent tool as, an, as a novel biomarker. The TUM researchers and their partners in the Munich Functional Metabolomics Initiative are testing the full spectrum of analytic methods in a study called HUMET. The study put volunteers through a series of dietary interventions. So we have about 900 plasma samples plus the urine samples and measured so far about uh, three to 400 uh, metabolites uh, per sample. So this are, is a huge data set which we obtain and the key point now is to, uh, to, to, uh, to read out the data and to make logic out of the data. And so this is the next step then to uh, bring these data in context, in a biological context in order to understand what uh, is the, cert the change of the concentration of certain metabolites telling us. These are the first attempts of uh, using metabolomics for comprehensive phenotyping of the metabolome of humans. But I'm almost sure that this will uh, establish as a standard procedure in uh, future science applications, but also in real life. And uh, as you, uh, you know, learn to handle those data and give meaning to those data, it may help in the end to uh, define the path to personalized nutrition or even the, the path to personalized medicine. At that point, metabolomics really might find its place in the doctor's office.